In this video, we're going to continue with our moving platform and specifically we're going to create our timeline. And our timeline is gonna be what animates the values for our movement. And we're just gonna animate between zero and one. That way we can scale it to anything else we need. So to do that, I'm going to delete my print string here. And under start movement, I'm going to pull off of this and just type in timeline and you'll see add timeline at the bottom. Hit enter. So this timeline is going to allow us to play something over time and return a value. Now I'm going to relabel this. Let's call this animator. Just pull this over here. This is going to look pretty scary at first, but if you make sure that this is hooked up into play and you double click, it's going to open a new window, whatever you named it with some default name. Hit compile save. Now what I want to do is first I want to create a track and this is going to be a timeline that allow, that will move over time and we can tell a value to change from one to the other based off of a keyframe. So to do this right here on uh, animator, think about what you need first. For me, I'm going to use a lerp, which means that I just want a zero to one. And in order to get a decimal, I do need a float, but there's all other sorts of things you can do here too. They're pretty cool. For now, I'm just gonna hit add float track. If you're not used to keyframe animation, it just means over time, I want this value to be this at this point, and I want this value to be this at this other point. To do that, I'm just gonna click these things right here just to reframe it. At zero seconds, I want my value to be zero. And at one second, I want it to be one. And this will give us a just straight over one second, zero to one. And we can do some cool mathy things with that. Let's actually rename. So right click rename. I'm gonna call this, let's call this alpha. And it's gonna be a zero to one. On this timeline track, I'm gonna right click and say add key. Click this keyframe. And in these values up here, without having to deal with snapping, I'm just gonna say at zero seconds, so zero time, it's gonna move it. I want the value, whoop, click on it again, if you lose it. I want the value to be zero. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna click somewhere over here, say add key again. Now I want at one second, so one second time, I want the value to be one. You see, you can reframe that with these buttons here. So this is all we really want. Um, you could add curves if you're more familiar with animation. You know, you can right click and do some cool stuff with that. I'm not worried about it. I want it to be linear. Um, I don't want any ease in, ease out for now, and we'll just keep it simple. So now I'm gonna come back to my event graph and this will play over the course of a second and say zero at zero seconds, 0.5 at half a second, one after one second. And it's going to spit back the current value, right? Zero, this value will be zero at zero seconds and it'll be one at one second at the very end. During update, this will continue over here and we can grab this value and do things with it. So we could, for example, assign the position constantly, right, pulling off of update, constantly assign a position according to the between zero to one value. So you think if zero is one position and one is another position over here, zero would position the thing right here, 0.5 would position the thing in between, and one would position at the end. Through zero to one, we can interpolate and animate between any two things we want just using a zero to one, and I'll show you how to do that. Because I'm gonna want access to this in multiple places, I'm also gonna show you uh, promoting a variable. If, if I take my alpha and I right click and I say promote to variable, I'm gonna call this, this new variable right here, I'm gonna call this lerp alpha. And all this is is just a, a secondary place that we can keep track of this variable. I'm not gonna expose it or, or anything. I don't want to pull this line in all other parts of our code. So I'm gonna keep it on a variable that I can just drag in and um, access it really easily. So every update, we're just going to reassign this value to our local lerp alpha. And this will be, again, be between zero and one. And then let's just print, print string just to, we'll just say is moving. You know what, let's, let's do this. Maybe we can just, uh, print the current value, compile, save. Make sure you save your map. Oh, this is a level of blueprints. Make sure you save those, good practice. Let's go back to our moving platform. So on begin play, we're gonna 
if you double click there, it'll hop down. On begin play, we are going to start our animator, which will play, right? We're pulling into play. If we want to do other things, we could do that too. And then as long as it's animating, so every frame as often as we can, we're going to grab this alpha, which should be between zero and one and store it off. So as soon as it starts, it should be zero. Whenever it finishes, it should be one. And then anything in between over the course of one second. And then while we're doing this, every frame, we're going to print the current value. Save that one more time, minimize, hit play, and watch our log. See what happened? This is our, our lerping value from zero to one, and it's moving constantly. So now we can actually use this and say, okay, do the math to figure out where it should be between this position and that position. And that's what we're gonna work on next, but we've gone through timelines and, and timelines are very complicated and you can do a lot of very interesting things with them. In particular, if you're looking to do something over time, it may be worth looking into um, adding a timeline into your blueprint.